So I don't always wear really crazy looking hockey jerseys walking around. Sometimes, but not always. But you'll see in a few minutes, I felt it was appropriate for tonight. So let's roll. So that's me. Pretty much, I've been obsessed with hockey since I was born. Um, learned how to skate when I was two years old back in Minnesota. Learned how to play hockey around age five in uh, Chicago and played through college before moving out here to Bozeman. Uh, for anyone in the audience, those, those old steel skates date me. They're pretty sweet. Um, after playing, I got into coaching, and the guys up in the audience for my team, I still play in the men's leagues, but uh, they'll vouch that I'm definitely a better coach than player. Uh, but hockey's taken me around the world. This is a shot of me when I spent a year in Africa teaching the game to kids that otherwise uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have, be afforded that opportunity to, to benefit from that game. But most recently, the game has taken me overseas to here, up on a mountainside right next to a Buddhist monastery overlooking the valley of the city of Leh in the Himalayas. So never thought I would, I would get to, to experience this part of the, the world, but the game of hockey's brought me there. So if we come down into Leh, the crazy part is there's over 2,000 players in Leh, hockey players in Leh. In the fro so this rink is at a little over 11,000 feet. Point of reference, that's higher than the peak of Lone Mountain. And in the winter, there's almost nothing else to do but play hockey because everything's frozen. Um, I was lucky enough to go up there for about a week. Uh, this is right after a game. I'm in, in the game dress. I had players on my team from Russia, Czech Republic, Sweden, U.S., Canada, all over the world. And we did some exhibition games against the Indian men's national team to help acclimate to the weather or uh, to the altitude before we went up higher. Um, a pretty surreal experience, to say the least. You can see the monastery in the background. I had the, op <clears throat> had the opportunity to play with my younger brother there. And this is a moment where we were kind of taking it all in after the game, thinking we just played a game at 11,000 feet. There's palaces and monasteries in the background. You can see the three fans going crazy in the background. It was, <laughs> it was, it was pretty big time. It was big time. <laughs> um, but like I said, I'm a coach more than I am a player. And while I was there, I had the opportunity to spend a week training the Indo-Tibetan Border Police team. It's a, a military team made up of active military uh, personnel who are charged with protecting Indian borders against Pakistan and Chinese-controlled Tibet. In their off days, they practice hockey. So the highlight for this for me was after our first, our first uh, skate, I was able to spend about an hour with their coach, and through the use of a translator, we, we shared a cup of tea, exchanged drills. I taught them how to download a coaching app to help with some stuff. But we basically were able to bond, even despite our language differences, over the game of hockey. So I was there with a nonprofit organization who not only is it just to grow the game of hockey, but is also to grow the benefits that it provides. So one of the core fundamental values is empowering young women and children in traditionally male-dominated societies and promoting inclusion and opportunities through the game of hockey, essentially improving lives through hockey. So those young girls are given an opportunity to skate right alongside the boys, develop their game, and then eventually, like this girl, be able to go away from their remote village, play in these games, and eventually make the Indian women's national team travel all over the world and basically assimilate more equally into a male-dominated culture. So the reason we were there was to attempt a world record. So inside of those trucks are hockey boards. We bought it in Austria. The Indian military shipped them to Delhi. They were bussed up. This pass is over 18,000 feet, going into the remote regions just south of the uh, India and Tibetan border. And we created this. <laughs> this is an area, this, this frozen lake and the village in the background is so remote it doesn't even show up on Google Maps. And yet we put in a full international standard regulation ice rink to compete for the world record game, for the hockey game at the highest elevation. That was our locker room. Essentially, <laughs> essentially a wall tent in the middle of nowhere, ice on the floor, and it was about negative 20 when we were there. Um, so the conditions were a little bit harsh, but everyone was, everyone was very excited to be there, so we kind of looked past that. Um, and at, at our traditional warm-up, before going to the rink, we had a custom escort, special escort from some of the folks from the local village in traditional, uh, in traditional dress. It was a little bit more fancy than the way I normally get escorted to the ice in my adult league games. <laughs> but, uh, but that was a pretty surreal experience. So we made it to the ice, got warmed up, started the game, and you'll see here, this is the historic first goal. Um, I was lucky enough to assist that, so I put my name on the record books, which was kind of uh, a, fun, a fun thing. But 
the game, once we got going, hockey's hockey. Everybody played hard. The game was just like any other with one big difference. The red team, the Indian national team, they had no problems. This is us between shifts. <laughs> we literally had a doctor on the bench in case any of us flatlanders had a heart attack during the game. And we all were taking pulls of oxygen between our 30 second shifts because we were so exhausted we could barely skate because we were at over 14,000 feet. <laughs> um, so this is appropriate. After the game, we've posed for the pictures and it's appropriate today because just yesterday morning we were officially confirmed by Guinness Book of World Records as completing the highest altitude hockey game ever. So we'll be in the next year's rule books. <laughs> And like I said, our, 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 while we were there to play in the game, that wasn't the only reason we were there. We also ended up collecting and donating gear. So we, have, oh, we had over 100 youth sets of gear that we left in the area, donated to the various clubs, as well as everybody that played in the games, about 50 people donated all their adult-sized gears as well to help grow the game and stimulate the game in India. This here is the difference between a five-star and a four-star review on TripAdvisor. This was my accommodations in Tangse, right outside the world record game. We spent three nights here. That's a drop toilet, and that's a constant reminder to me that travel does not equal vacation. <laughs> so I look back at all the adventures I've had in India and Malaysia and Africa, and the game has taken me in so many great directions, and literally every, it's been such a positive driver in my life. Now I have the opportunity to start teaching my young son how to skate, and I look forward to seeing where the game will take him as he uh, develops his passion for it as well. So thank you all for your time tonight.